Hello everyone, my name is Nicole. Welcome to this video. Thank you so much for being here today and I I hope that this video helps you in some way. Uh, you probably clicked on this either because you're subscribed to me and you're my friend and you just want to watch this video and be supportive of me or maybe you're watching this video because you need advice for working in a bookstore. I am here to give you as much advice as I possibly can, provide some knowledge based on my experience working at Barnes & Noble. I understand, first of all, that Barnes & Noble is like a huge corporation and maybe you are not interested in working for a company like Barnes & Noble, or maybe you are, but maybe you're also looking to like maybe support your local indie bookstore, which is also respectable and something that I do encourage, but you know, the idea here is that Hopefully this video will give you some helpful tips on working at a bookstore, on getting hired at a bookstore, and what to expect working at a bookstore, I guess. And um, I am also in no way trying to say that working at Barnes & Noble is the same as working at any other bookstore. Also every Barnes & Noble is different depending on the location and the management, but just to preface this entire video, <laughs> this, these are just my personal opinions, my personal experiences, and my personal tips. Um, you know, if you had a different experience working at Barnes & Noble or at a bookstore, to me, that is totally valid. I'm not here to invalidate your experiences or anything like that. Anyway, I've got my tea. I've got my little snail holding my tea bag as always. So let me get into uh, talking about everything that I have to talk about. There are timestamps or chapters in the description so you can skip to any section that you personally are interested in. I will also have a short Q&A at the end where I will be answering questions that I've received on Instagram and Twitter. So yeah, okay, let me get started. <laughs> Let's hydrate the throat. Okay, so let me begin by talking about how I got the job. I believe I was a senior in high school. I may have been a junior towards the end of the year. I truly don't remember. I believe I was a senior though. Um, so I was around 17 years old. That was my first job ever. So Barnes & Noble was my first job ever and I didn't really have a lot of work experience to my name, but I did have a lot of extracurriculars from school and I also had some volunteering experience from the zoo. You can make it work. What I'm trying to get at here is that if you don't have any experience working at a store or truly anywhere, that is okay. You need to create a resume and sell yourself, all right? So I took all of the things that I do um, on my off time when I'm not in school and I tried to create I tried to grab as many skills as possible from those things and put them onto my resume. So I say, let's say I gathered a lot of customer service experience from volunteering at the zoo, or I learned how to speak to people because I was the president of all of these cool clubs. Also, by the way, if you don't have any of those extracurriculars, let's say you are still in high school and you want to work at a bookstore, don't let this discourage you. That is also fine. Let me move on to like how I got the job. I think that the way that I really, really got the job at Barnes & Noble was because I was so insistent and I would show up to the store literally every single day asking to talk to the manager and shoving my resume in her face and asking her for an interview. This might be a little aggressive. Maybe some people don't like it. That's what worked for me until this lady was like, you know what, let me just sit down with this girl, give her a quick interview and check it out. And the interview went well. It was really not something that you even have to prepare yourself for. Again, this could be different for other locations, for other bookstores, but I think that the biggest advice for interviewing and getting a job is to just be honest and show the manager or the hiring people how much you really want to work there. Getting the job, you just have to make sure that they're hiring um, ask to talk to the manager specifically if they're not there show up another day and make sure that the people know who you are know your face all of that kind of stuff and just be honest and tell them how much you really want to work there and how much you admire the store all of this stuff it really helps and it makes people you know believe that you really will make a good part of the team because you are so passionate about the job that you'll do a good job, I think. <laughs> okay, so that was like my whole hiring process. The experience of actually working there was honestly the greatest experience I've ever had. Again, I understand that some people maybe didn't have a great experience, but luckily I had really cool co-workers of all different ages. Everyone was so interesting and everybody was so nice and friendly. 
and the managers were also very friendly so flexible and so amazing i was i'm still shocked that i had such a great experience working at like some corporate retail job you know because at the end of the day that's what barnes and noble is if you are a reader if you are a book lover you're gonna love working at a bookstore because all i really did at the job was either customer service desk where i helped people find the books they were looking for this is to this day the greatest experience i have ever had there's just nothing like helping somebody look find a book that they're looking for giving it to them in their hands and them like thanking you and also like helping um people just find a book they don't even know what they're looking for but giving them book recommendations and then actually listening to you and going home with that book just feels amazing another thing that we did was work at the cash register this is probably like the most boring part but at the end of the day it was also very interesting to see what people were buying and talk to them about either they're buying a book maybe that you've read maybe they're buying a book that you want to read maybe they're buying a book that you hate you get to like really see what people are purchasing and then talk to them about it and that's actually kind of fun and the last i guess job that you really do at barnes and noble if you're a bookseller is organized sections this can be extremely fun or also extremely frustrating a lot of barnes and nobles have have uh, cafes inside and those cafes can get so messy and this is where people will grab like 20 books or like 50 magazines sit at a table read through one and then leave that stack of stuff on the table on the floor by the trash cans it's always a mess so organizing the sections can be really frustrating because truly there are just so many piles of random books scattered throughout the store that you have to constantly be picking up and then putting those books back so it can get frustrating but I think sometimes maybe when you're like in a good mood it can be really relaxing and it can be so much fun to just organize a store put a book back in its place and at the end of the day see the work that you did and just look back into this beautiful bookstore and be proud of yourself because you did something like that it was so much fun looking through books also like while you're working there discovering new books discovering new authors it's just an experience that I really honestly recommend any reader or book lover to do like if you can if you have the opportunity to maybe volunteer at a library or volunteer at a local indie bookstore or work at a bookstore I think you should do it because it's just so much fun everything about it is amazing let me talk quickly about the bad or the negative things and then I'll move on to the Q&A at the end worst thing I think working at Barnes & Noble is dealing with customers because although you can get a customer who is so so amazing so positive and just makes you so happy and is so thankful for what you did for them you can also get really bad customers who will be constantly complaining about the book prices or maybe they're complaining that a section is too messy or honestly anything that can definitely bring your day down i mean this is the case for almost any retail job but sometimes when you're having a bad day the store is really messy and then you get a customer that's just like why is this book 16 dollars if on amazon it's nine you can get really frustrated easily at this job i think because again at the end of the day it's just a customer service retail job so you have to deal with customers a lot the second worst thing i think is probably the pay i personally don't know how much they're paying right now but when i started which i think i worked there 2013 through 2016 2017 around there so i was getting paid like eight dollars when i first got there and i left and i was getting paid like 9.75 so it's a minimum wage job and if you're working at a really busy and large store it can be uh really tiring especially putting all those books away and hauling all of these books and everything so the pay isn't really um it doesn't equate the amount of labor that you have to do sometimes. Before I get into the q and I want to share some of the skills that I personally learned that I think are applicable if you are also looking to work at an indie bookstore or a library or anything like that. First of all, to work at a library, I believe you need to go to school for that, but I'm not too sure. Don't hold me against... Don't hold... Don't hold me to that. So I definitely... 
I definitely learned a lot about books working there because I was constantly surrounded by them. People were constantly asking me for books by a certain author and then I would discover these people. So you even if maybe you are a reader but maybe you only read a specific genre don't let that scare you away from applying to work at a bookstore because you will learn so much about books working at a bookstore so don't worry about that and you'll also again just learn a lot of organization skills don't be scared if you don't know where books go when you first start trust me like by the end of your first week you will be familiar with your store's layout so don't let that scare you away from applying to a bookstore and yeah i honestly think that anyone can do this job if they like it if they're willing to do it it's a very simple job working at a bookstore and it's honestly very relaxing being surrounded by books all day is honestly amazing so i got a few questions on twitter and on Instagram. So I'm going to first start with my questions on Twitter. I won't be sharing um, who asked the questions because I'm not sure if they want to be named, but okay. The first question that I got a few times was the discounts of working there and oh my god, the discount is incredible. You get 30% off everything in the store. There are some exceptions and I don't re quite remember what the exceptions are but there are some and the discount is great you get 30% off everything like I said and then at the cafe you get half off and you know they serve Starbucks so you literally get like you can get like a venti frappuccino or whatever for like four dollars or three dollars the discount was amazing so yeah 30% off um, that could have changed but I don't think it did another question I got was what's something that you learned from your job that you never thought about prior and I think that the biggest thing that I learned again is probably customer service skills and how to like handle bad customers and just how to talk to people in general even if you're not going to have a future in retail I think that learning how to talk to people is something that I learned pretty well at this job that has followed me ever since would you recommend working in a bookstore as a reader like i've said throughout this video yes yes you will love that experience so so much what's the most common thing customers ask the most common thing i would say is just where is a certain book and um you just kind of had to know where books are like i said you will be familiar with the layout of your store pretty quickly so don't let that scare you but people usually are just going to come and ask you where this is, where th that is, so. I totally forgot that there are computers all over the store that you can use to search up a book's location, and you also get these like little mobile devices that you can use to scan any book and it will tell you exactly where it goes, so this is not a big deal at all. Um, someone asked, how do the books that get those little staff blurb recommendations get chosen? A few people asked me about that staff recommendations thing, and I am so upset to say that my store didn't do that until like last year. So when I worked there, I didn't get a chance to do that whole like staff recommends books, but um, what from what I see, I think they literally just decide to have a little meeting and ask for the co-workers to just recommend some books and then add that to the section. Uh, is there any book you love now and only found because you were working in a bookstore? I have to think about this because this is a really good question. I think I'm gonna have to go with Where Do You Go Bernadette? This is a book that I recommended in my previous video for comfort reads. I wouldn't have found, about, found out about this book if it wasn't for the fact that I worked at a bookstore, I think this one was just like in the section and I saw this beautiful cover and I was like, what is this? This is so cool. And honestly, throughout working there, there were a bunch of books that I found out about just because I worked there because I would constantly be exposed to them. But yeah, Where'd You Go Bernadette is probably my answer for this. Um, someone asked for any customer stories and how does it feel to live out all our dreams? <laughs> honestly, I... Like, this is why I'm making this video, because I truly loved working at Barnes & Noble so much and me and my boyfriend constantly talk about the fact that we want we should just like work there again in the future when we're old or something because it was just so great. But the first question, any customer stories? I think the best customer stories are when I would get those like moms or parents coming for 
the summer reading books because, you know, summer reading was insane because we would sell out of those books so quickly and there were always people asking for them. But I guess the best customer story or the best customer experience was helping a parent that was truly struggling who probably didn't even speak English and didn't even know what the book was or where to even start finding them. And when you f help these people, they are just so thankful at the end and I just get really emotional when it would help them because they reminded me a lot of my mom who is Cuban and doesn't really speak English and she definitely didn't speak English when I was a kid so I would just imagine her trying to like find all of my summer reading and my sister's summer reading and hopefully having someone help her at Barnes and Noble so yeah helping all of these people who truly didn't even know where to look and they were just so thankful at the end it was it was so nice my friend asked me <laughs> to tell the story of how I met my boyfriend because we met at Barnes & Noble. We recently celebrated our five-year anniversary and I love him so much. But he worked at receiving, which is the backside of Barnes & Noble where you receive all of the boxes and of the new shipments and then you put the books out. And I don't know, he was just like this beautiful, tall, mysterious guy who worked in the back. And he worked such odd hours too, like early in the morning. And, I, and then he would leave right when I would come to work. So I was just always so intrigued by him, you know. Then I left Barnes & Noble to go work at another job. I came back and he was still working there. And I was like, all right, this is it. Like, I need to know who this person is. And it was just fate because like I said, we were never... Um, working at the same time and that time that I went back to Barnes & Noble we got the same shift twice and after the second time we just decided to talk to each other and we shared music interests and all that weird boring stuff and then we just kind of fell in love I guess <laughs> so it's not that exciting of a story but it is cool that I met um, my boyfriend at Barnes & Noble someone asked worst things working there Worst things about working there, I already kind of answered that. And the cool coolest experience actually was when I met Chloe Grace Moretz. She went there for a signing of If I Stay. If you remember, if you know, you know. Like, do you remember that book? That was cool. We got to meet her, um, like all the coworkers got to meet her in the back and I felt so like VIP. It was very, very cool. That was probably the coolest experience, working at Barnes & Noble, meeting Chloe Grace Moretz. Okay, I, got, I like this question a lot. Someone asked, do you model the way you organize your books after theirs? And I do. I currently don't have any book shelves right now, but when I move out again and I get my bookshelves back, I organize them by genre and then I organize them by alphabetical order of author's last name, which is how the entire store is, is um, modeled and organized. So yes, I definitely do organize my books after. Barnes & Noble. Someone asked, are you told which book's expected to be a best-selling for the front tables? Yes, well we're not really told what is expected, they kind of come in already being told that they're gonna that they're gonna end up on the best-selling uh, table, so I guess we kind of get like a preview of that, but not really because it all depends on like what is already out there, like what we already know as best-selling, we put those on the best-selling table. What section is of the store is the most difficult to organize? Oh my god, there are so many because there are some sections that are just always messy. So when you go in to try to put books away or organize them, it's so frustrating because they're already so messy. But I would probably say the kids section because that's the one that gets like the most traffic and the most disorganized because parents just kind of like, you know, you just throw your kids in there and then they make a mess. And some picture books are so thin and they're just so floppy and they're everywhere and there's so many of them, it's crazy. So I would say the kids section is the messiest. <laughs> What's my opinion on ebooks? I love ebooks. I actually have a Nook, an e-reader from Barnes & Noble that's been discontinued, and I have always sworn by Nooks um, over Kindles, and I feel like um, I'm getting scared because I think that they're just gonna stop making Nooks altogether, and then my Nook is gonna die, and I'm gonna end up having to get an e-reader, um, a Kindle, not an e-reader, hello? So ebooks are pretty cool. We Barnes & Noble sells ebooks too, so. What's a fact about B Barnes & Noble that people would be surprised to know? I guess you'd be surprised to know that they 
tear book covers up for some books that I think are overdue or that the publisher wants to recycle or something. So it's kind of cool to know that a bookstore destroys books. Can you read on the job? You kind of can, but not really. I think you can if you're working at like the cash register and you don't really have much to do. You can kind of flip through books, but to be honest, if you're working at a busy store, you will have no time to read unless you're like hiding away and trying to sneak in a book or two in there. Okay, the last question I'll answer is this one that says, who gets to pick the books on the tables? I The arrangement is what I miss about bookstores. Yeah, organizing the books is just so satisfying, like I've said before, but I think it's just corporate. They send us what they want the store to look like, depending on the size of it and depending on the layout of the architecture. We kind of get sent what to organize our tables as. And yeah, it, unfortunately, that's kind of out of the control of each store. But again, if you work at an indie bookstore or something, that probably won't be the case. So that is the end of my video. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I will gladly answer almost anything. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I hope that you keep reading.